Hello everyone and today we're gonna talk about the Xbox One and whether or not it is an obsolete system. So I say this because last year at E3 of course Microsoft announced that all future Xbox One games would be coming to the PC at the same time. So this means the Xbox One technically no longer has any exclusives right now and exclusives are a big reason to own a console. So why should Xbox One owners be concerned about that? You know, what's 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 the deal for us Xbox One owners? I count myself, I own an Xbox One. It's gathering dust at the moment. It is gathering dust. And to see to show how little I played to tell you how little I played this, my Wii U has been on more times in twenty seventeen than my Xbox One. Okay. Okay, just because Zelda came out, which technically isn't the Wii U exclusive, it's on Switch as well, but, you know, it's Nintendo exclusive, I guess, so the Wii U ain't getting any more exclusives, at least, either. But the Wii U is a dead system, and its uh, sequel is out, or its follow-up thing that's out. The Switch is a portable system. Is the Switch a portable? Is it a console? Who knows? Right, anyway, uh, back to the Xbox One. So why should, we, why should you be concerned about this? Well, the Xbox One is a very underpowered system. I mean, most third-party games, their weakest sort of performance and visuals come on the Xbox One. Now, you might think, whoa, fanboy, that's a statement of fact. Okay, we can back that up, but there's tons of videos out there on YouTube. I mean, go check out, like, Digital Foundry or something. They do pretty comprehensive videos. And again, they'll show you the PS4, Xbox, PC version, and generally the Xbox... I'm talking generally, not every game. Generally, the Xbox One game is the weakest. Most of the time, they run at 900p 30fps or 720p 60fps. So we're talking games like Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront, for example, with 720p 60. But most games, some games can run at 1080p, but most uh, are 900 at 30. Um, now, entry-level gaming PCs, you know, RX 460 systems, GTX 1050 GPUs, they are the kind of GPUs you get at entry-level. They can at least achieve 1080p and 30 FPS with higher graphic settings than both the consoles and usually you can find them for around the same money. A GTX 1050 will cost you around £100 in the UK, you know, just for the graphics card. And bear in mind that if you have an existing PC with a quad-core CPU, that's all you need to buy to make it a gaming PC. So if you have something like a sort of desktop, like a Dell or something like that, the GTX 1050 also has a 75 watt TDP, which means that it doesn't need an external power supply. So you could just buy a 1050, put it into your PCI Express slot, and away it goes, upgrade the old GPU that came with it. And as long as you've got something like a Core 2 Quad or a Core i5 from any generation, it'll do much better than an Xbox One or a PS4. Some games you can get higher settings, like GTA 5, you can get high settings and you can get 1080p approaching 60 FPS. It's only like 40 to 60, it does fluctuate a little bit. GTA 5 is a demanding game, but GTA 5 on the Xbox One is locked at 30 FPS and is 1080p. So I'm just saying you can get much better performance. I mean, you could buy one of those cheap old Dell PCs for, you know, for le way less than the cost of an Xbox One and buy a GTX 1050 and you could spend maybe about 150 to 200 pounds and get yourself a gaming PC that's going to at least match the Xbox One, match the PS4, and, you know, you have a choice on the PC. You can lower the settings to medium and get 60 FPS. I use Gears of War as a good example. An Xbox One, okay, it's 1080p, 30 FPS. It does run a mixture of the PC equivalent of high and medium settings. So on PC, you've got a choice of what resolution and frame rate you want, okay? Granted, if you do have a higher-end system, you get more choice. Personally, I had the R9 390X, so I had a choice of 4K, 
30 FPS, 1440p at 60 FPS, or 1080p at 75 FPS. Okay, this was all with ultra settings, so higher settings than the Xbox One, and with with uh, with higher frame rates. I could have chosen 30 FPS at 4K. I know I did recordings where it dipped below 30 FPS, but while not recording, it stayed pretty much at 30 FPS. I do have a GTX 1070 now, so yeah, I don't know what that is. I haven't downloaded it, uh, uninstalled it, because it's huge. It's like 76 gigabytes, Gears of War 4, and I didn't think it was that good, to be honest with you. But I never even bothered installing it on the Xbox One, so I had the choice of Xbox One PC, and I would rather have 60 FPS. Now we get to the PS4 Pro here, which I'll be honest with you, I don't see the point in that either. Xbox Scorpio can't really comment on it right now because we don't know anything about it as of the recording of this video. Don't know what specs it has. There's a rough, the the rough. There was a rough sort of paper released from Microsoft which says. A couple of details. Apparently it's going to have 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is good for 4K. You're going to need that. The PS4 has 8 gigabytes of unified memory. This is going to have 12, so it might do a bit better in 4K. The 6 teraflop GPU doesn't really say much, really. Um, it's kind of hard to gauge. Uh, my 390X was a 6 teraflop GPU. It could do 4K at 30 FPS, medium settings in a lot of games. Did Battlefield 1 4K, it's of 30 to 40. So I think you should be okay on Scorpio for uh, for uh, 4K 30 FPS. I doubt it'll do 4K 60. I don't think so. I don't think it'll get anywhere near 4K. It will, if it does, it'll be low to medium settings. Like the settings will be pushed down. Uh, but again, publishers, uh, publishers really have the influence really on resolution and frame rate as well as developers because publishers want the game to look good. It's easier to market a game that looks good. Which is why I believe that they always push graphical fidelity over frame rate. Personally I'd rather push frame rate. Like uh, the, the, the three resolutions I mentioned of my 390X, I'd rather play at 1440p because it's 60 FPS. I think that was fine to play at. Again, uh, my GTX 1070, that has 6 point, I think it's 6 point, 6.5 teraflops is what it is. I think, I don't know exactly what the Asus Strix one is, because obviously as you increase the clock speed, it increases the compute performance, so thus increases the number of teraflops that it can, that it can output. It's the floating point operations per second is what teraflop means. It is a measure, it's one measurement of compute performance, but... Yeah, the 390X and the 1070, they have the same compute performance, yet the uh, 1070 has a much higher clock speed and it has much more memory bandwidth as well. So it tends to outperform the 390X. So using teraflops as an absolute measurement of compute performance, it is kind of flawed to talk about it as the be all and end all. Because you get a lot of people that are suddenly an expert on compute performance now and a lot of fanboys saying yeah it'll do 4k 60 fps it's like no it won't no it won't because we've had i mean we, you can't test the xbox scorpio specs out on a pc because we don't know what they are don't know what the cpu is uh will it be apparently it's going to be another version of the jaguar overclocked jaguar similar to the ps4 pro it would be nice if it was a ryzen CPU, that would have been quite cool. Maybe a Ryzen 5, uh, but it has to be 8 cores, really. Ryzen 5 is only, well, Ryzen 5, there's 6 core, 12 thread, so technically, but it has to be the, similar to the Xbox One version because Xbox One games have to still be compatible with it uh, without getting the upgrade. And of course, games developed for the Scorpio have to be compatible with the Xbox One. So that's really what's holding this back, I think. Uh, another argument that is always used is optimization. I know a lot of people bring that up and say consoles are better optimized. I mean, I don't get that because I don't think 900p and 30 FPS is not what I think of, certainly, when I think of optimization. Um, downgrading it 
it is a form of optimization, but it's more of a downgrade to achieve optimization, really. And yes, a lot of people bring up games like Dishonored 2 and Batman Arkham Knight. I should point out that Batman Arkham Knight runs really well right now. I should point out, over time, a lot of these problems do get fixed. And the same on consoles, it's not as if games get released and there's no patches on consoles. That was one of the advantages of console gaming was, in the past, yes, we didn't have to bother downloading patches. People also complain downloading drivers, like that's a complicated thing. All you do is I open my GeForce experience and I tick a box, download the latest drivers for me, and that's, that's it. That's me done. That's me done. That's all I do is have to go in, right click on the GeForce experience, or click on, right click on the NVIDIA... Uh, oh, there's an update available. There you go. There's an update available. I'm looking at the GeForce experience screen. And then all I have to do is click install and uh, it'll install. GeForce Game Ready Driver is available. I click one button, I click next a couple of times. I might need to restart the PC. Um, I don't know if you restart with NVIDIA. AMD is to restart, but yeah, it downloads the driver update automatically for you. And all you have to do is click accept, it'll, it'll install it, it'll restart your PC, and job's done. Very, very similar. Now, consoles don't have that, don't they? Don't they not? No, don't you have firmware updates? Aren't they just the same thing? Don't you get told, hey, there's a new firmware update, don't you click next a bunch of times, click accept, and then it downloads and installs, and then your console restarts? Isn't that the same process? It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. So I don't see that as a disadvantage to PC gaming. I mean, it's very, very simple. AMD is the same thing. Again, you just tick the box saying I want updates automatically and it'll just inform you whenever there's an update. Windows updates just do the same thing. Downloads and they download and install in the background as well. Sometimes there's no need to restart your PC. And restarting the PC just doesn't take long. If you have an SSD, it's 10 seconds. 10 second boot, cold boot for me is 10 seconds. A restart is, you know, just under 10 seconds for me. Um, I don't see it as being a huge issue. Again, the Xbox One is like, you know, doesn't take very long to start. So I think having that as the advantage. But even with those games, even with those games that are poorly optimized, they still outperform the console version. And bear in mind, we do have the option on PC of downgrading that. You know, if we want to run Dishonored 2, if I if we ran Dishonored 2 at 900p, most PCs wouldn't struggle. You know, a, a mid-range PC that was struggling to run it at 1080p, if you drop that resolution, it's, there's no problem. It'll run at 60fps. It should, or it'll stay at 60fps longer. A lot of the problem was optimization. So if you lower the resolution, you have less load on the GPU, you get the same load on the CPU, mind you, at the same resolution. The resolution doesn't have a huge impact. Resolution doesn't scale one-to-one -one with the CPU, at least. Um, it does have more draw calls to do at a higher resolution, mind you, but it generally doesn't have doesn't have any more physics to do, it doesn't have any more AI routines to run, doesn't have any more game logic to run, things like that. But that's the thing is I would say it's downgraded. It is optimized, okay, but it's optimized in a downward direction. It's not as if it's scaled up to run on a console and has to be scaled down to run on a PC. Uh, now we do we do get those games with issues, but I would say that the the Dishonored Two was terrible on consoles as well. It was badly optimized there as well. There was dips into the it was thirty FPS and it would dip into the twenties regularly. Whereas on PC, I found it was 60 FPS. It could dip as low as 20 occasionally, but it was dipping mostly down to the 40s, really. So you're still getting a higher average frame rate and higher quality settings. I mean, you also have the option to lower the quality. I mean, I could get it running fine. If I set the frame rate limit to 30 FPS, it never dropped the frame at 1080p and ultra settings. It was just struggling to hit that 60. I mean, obviously, I don't want to play at 30 FPS, but at least I can get a game playable. I've never, ever had a PC game that I've never been able to actually play. Okay, whether whether it's some level 
I've always never had a PC game that's absolutely refused to run. Even No Man's Sky, when I had it briefly, it ran. It ran okay for me, I thought. It was okay. I just ran it at sort of medium settings. And the performance was, I would say, acceptable for me. But yeah, I don't know what to do with my Xbox One. I am tempted just to get rid of it. Um, the only thing I use is the controller. The controllers, that's it. I plug the controller into my PC and that's it. Again, that's another advantage of PC gaming is the choice of controller that you want to use. You can use the mouse and keyboard, of course, which is superior for sort of competitive shooters. If I'm just playing to relax, then I'll just play with the controller. I can stream to my other, my Dream Machine PC. I just stream to that other PC. You can buy a Steam streaming box, sit on the couch, sit back relax with an Xbox controller and enjoy PC gaming. Uh, but yeah, I very rarely put my Xbox One on. I think the last time I had it on was when I was doing the Perfect Dark footage. That was it. That was the last time I powered that console up. That was back in ja mostly in December we recorded that, but it was back in January, I guess, was the last time. But with no exclusives coming, it seems kind of a pointless system. Scorpio may revitalize it, but Again, hopefully it just doesn't suffer from the same problem as the PS4 Pro. But anyway, that is all for this video. So if you have any opinions on Xbox One, if you want to talk about the Xbox One and why you think it isn't obsolete, then leave a comment below. And thank you for joining me for this video. I will see you again soon and goodbye.